a very good evening to you mambo vp hall is well with you that is my hope right here from uh, the studios of 89.7 contact fm my name as always is eugene Anangwe. The show you're listening to is One on One and this is the platform where we get to talk to various personalities that shape the news agenda either there from Rwanda or beyond. And of course today we will, we're going to be looking at the issue for the Rwanda Governance Board and my guest in studio is none other than Mr. Gerald Mbanda. He is in charge of media at the Rwanda Governance Board. We want just to understand the whole institution of Rwanda Governance Board and of course his department. What is it there for? And of course many other issues uh, here and there as the interview goes on. So Mr. Gerald, welcome to One on One. Oh, thank you. Lorna. Indeed. So let's quickly talk about Rwanda Governance Board. When we hear about Rwanda Governance Board, what what are we talking about? Because people understand that they have their local leaders and who govern them per se from wherever they are. Then we have now from the higher level where we have ministers who are in government to create some policies. Then now we have the Rwanda Governance Board. What exactly do you do there? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I, I think the uh, Governance Board uh, comes in to supplement what uh, you're saying the policy mm -hmm. uh, to see that such a policies are put into practice mm -hmm. and uh, it's mainly tried to see that good governance prevails in the country mm -hmm. um, when you look at it uh, Rwanda governance board it has various departments uh, we have got uh, the department of research mm -hmm. and this research uh, is uh, focused on governance issues uh, for example, the uh, uh, research on what they call citizen report card, uh, where the citizens um, inform how they feel they're being governed by their leaders. Mm. So you see they're complementing one another. Uh, There's what they call uh, Rwanda governance scorecard. Um, all those uh, are issues that uh, uh, go with governance. Mm. Uh, and also we have uh, other departments uh, in decentralization, to say decentralization issues. We have in those departments issues of uh, homegrown initiatives, how these initiatives have uh, affected uh, the, positively or negatively. the policies mm. that are, mm. uh, are in the country. Mm. Um, there are other departments also to do with... Uh, um, uh, non-government organization registration uh, giving them uh, legal status um, political parties uh, registration and all the like and also you come to our department the media uh, whereby we have uh, media issues uh, coordination of media and see that media policy is uh, um, is uh, put into, into action, practice and action. Yeah, let's then talk about that. let's talk about your department just immediately jumping into those uh, different departments that you talk about so then how do you do this uh, f from from the media arm or department of the rwanda governance board you say you ensure that uh, you know policies are followed in terms of in regards to media then how do you exercise this because we know of different media organs you know that purport to be doing what you're saying you do so at what level do you do yours oh, our level our level principally is coordination uh, we don't go into uh, performing those activities mm -hmm. uh, for example I'll, I'll let me give an example of the um, uh, the uh, media high council uh, the media high council is charged with uh, uh, capacity building. Mm -hmm. So capacity building, of course, uh, is part of the media policy whereby we need uh, journalists to be trained, uh, journalists to be improve on their skills. Mm. So to see we work hand in hand closely with the Media High Council to see that uh, such uh, tasks or such activities are, are, are implemented. Mm. Um, when we look at um, the Rwanda Media Commission, it's a new uh, a new uh, organ. organ that has just gone in place. Uh, it needs support uh, in order to do their work. So we give them support uh, to see that they put into action uh, what they do. Let's, let's uh, just hold that thought. You, you, you'll bring it in uh, as probably as you answered this, but uh, there, there's been concern at some quarters that um, 
you know, th- th- there are, there's a long channel. Uh, there's a lot of bureaucracy when it comes to getting this support, especially mm. the, the, the people from the media. Mm. Uh, I understand from my research that there is some funding that happens now with the Media High Council being mm. a capacity building organ for the media. Mm. They receive certain funding, mm. which some quarters have told me that has to first go through Rwanda Governance Board. <laughs> then now it comes to them yeah. before it gets to the journalists who need to be the beneficiaries of this. Mm. Could you clarify on this? Uh, well, uh, I, I don't see or I have not heard myself any um, problem uh, relating to such a funds coming in. Anyway, what is, is being, this how it happens? Am I correct to, with this is, channel? This is, is how being, it happens. Uh, what happens like that? Yes, there is what happens like that. Um, what is being referred to? It's some money from, from the donors. Yes. Uh, I'll talk about, for example, UNDP, mm-hmm. uh, the money that uh, comes from them, of course, through RGB, uh, which coordinates media activities and reimbursed to some of these organizations. It, it, it's a procedure, and I think uh, the mechanism was agreed upon uh, by the donor agencies and RGB and the beneficiaries. Mm. So I haven't seen or haven't had any big contradiction where that money has not been delivered. Mm. Uh, to the beneficiaries. The, the, the cries and, are from below there. And, and which ones? <laughs> you see, when, when people say, okay, then yeah. what was the principle behind deciding that it doesn't just go straight to the Media High Council and the Media High Council does what it has to do without having to go through the oh, seas that's, that's, of the that Rwanda that government? Is, uh, that is a funding mechanism that was agreed upon uh, between donors and, uh, and uh, the government. Otherwise... What was uh, the reason to this uh, decision? Uh, this institution was still new, they were still young, uh, still new, and of course no uh, efficient capacities to coordinate uh, such activities. And mm-hmm. I think it's not going to be a permanent, um, a permanent um, mechanism. So this is a babysitting uh, process? Uh, uh, you can call it like that if you want. But it's making to just uh, have time for this institution to grow mm-hmm. so that they can have their own capacity. Uh, to be dealing uh, in uh, handling such a bunch of money and budgeting. Up to now, they are still grappling with issues of capacity. Uh, they are understaffed, you know, and uh, some of these uh, financial um, donations, of course, they have reporting back mechanism. You don't simply receive money mm-hmm. and you say we are going to use it and then we sit, we sit down and keep quiet. Mm-hmm. You have to give... Uh, feedback reports, how this amount of money was used. So you tell them, you guys can't do that, we at RGB, uh, No, we don't we will say do it. it was seen between the two sides, but that 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 uh, that gap, mm. uh, that, that capacity gap is available. So how are we, so, how are we filling that gap? Immediately uh, today when yeah. we speak, what have we done? Uh, oh, what we've done is that, that if you look at now, from the time these uh, 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 mechanisms were put in place mm. up to now, the issue of capacity is improving. They have uh, uh, hired more staff uh, and they're getting to uh, making their own budgets. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, They've acquired some, some consultants uh, who are helping them to make basic documents, reporting documents and everything. So it is improving. And I think the, the, the ultimate goal uh, is to have uh, these mechanisms um, run on their own. Mm-hmm. It is something that will phase out. Mm-hmm. It won't be there permanently. It's just a form so of it will guidance phase out? for proper utilization of resources of, yeah, of or resources. funding. Yeah. So did we agree on a timeline when uh, the babies will have uh, their own feet I and start running around? I can't remember now, but what I know is not something that's going to take long. Okay. Maybe Less than five years, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, let's five, talk about five, always. yes. Let's talk about the citizens' report kind. Mm. In 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 many cases, mm. uh, 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 f- f- you will hear that uh, you know it helps formulate the basis of governance, and 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 probably uh, this is very understandable as to why the Rwanda Governance Board would have such a thing. Um, are you able to tell us today? what the mood is on the ground when it comes to the report card and briefly what do you guys look into to formulate uh, this report card uh well well uh, or did i throw you off i think you're throwing me to another department which mm-hmm. is research and mm-hmm. i'm not a researcher mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm i'm in the media department uh, but uh, but don't you I ask know, them questions as in regards to media issues 
and no, they no. have a report card on the same some score no no, no. Uh, on, on media we have a different thing uh, we have uh, our research focuses on what we call um, the Rwanda media barometer mm-hmm. you know if you want maybe i could tell you that in detail tell me for just in 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 in, in, <laughs> yes, in yes. bullet point form. yeah um in uh, 2012 uh, we carried out uh, the first ever Rwanda media barometer what is this aimed at it's aimed at looking at uh, media development in the country mm-hmm. uh, it never existed before mm-hmm. and uh, we were using um international accepting indicators um like seeing the freedom of the media uh, access to information um how the laws favor um doing um media within the country mm. so we have uh, the first uh, the first ever uh, media policy uh, we are proud to have it because we found it's a step ahead because it informs us uh, of the status of media and then from that we are able to know what we have to improve on uh, so that we can have uh, an operating free this was done when media 2012 2012 today we're 2014 yeah. and maybe the feeling or the mood on the ground could be that these policies are just for the shelves i mean after they are created or formulated mm-hmm. they don't make it outside here because if i was to ask you now mm-hmm. what are the key things apart from these trainings that we see that the policy has uh, or the barometer realized mm-hmm. what are those things that have been implemented to date from 2012 oh yes um for example when you look at uh, the barometer we had in 2012 there are some critical issues that uh, uh it raised uh, like for example having our civil society participating in uh, media making media uh, one of the issues for development mm-hmm. or being involved mm-hmm. uh, to see that they participate they are partners within media development so it was very low but uh, as of now uh, i think uh, there is even a fund that has been created so that civil uh, society organization can take part into promoting uh, media training as we were saying and also other areas whereby uh, they can have uh, um they can have a say secondly uh, the the barometer took place when uh this a number of reforms were 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 taking place uh they were taking place so soon uh, next year 2015 i think we're going to conduct a second one but this time of course we shall be having uh because the other one uh was just the beginning mm-hmm. there wasn't any bench um uh, there wasn't something to start on but for this one to do the second one of course there are critical areas we are looking at uh, is there an improvement have we gone down have we gone up so i think uh, we shall have a lot of indicators which will uh, help to to put up the 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 second um edition of the of so you base the findings of the first one yeah uh, to 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 gauge the second one Correct. i was going to ask you for a clarification on whether you're saying you went ahead to do a barometer research without having any you know lead or any guidelines but <laughs> anyway let's let's yeah. let's let's talk about the access to information issue because today yes we have an access to information law mm. but its implementation mm. and also the way reporters or different media houses come out to uh, ask for its you know being put into effect or giving out uh, reports on some government institutions or individuals who have not or public individuals not necessarily government who have not given out information we st- we don't see too much of that happening okay fine someone can argue and say we are not violating the law we are giving the information mm. but then again is this enough from the seat you sit on in your mm. office do you mm. really feel mm. that enough is being done are we our are our public officials exploiting full fully this access to information issue in your own assessment what do you think um well i, I would say that uh, of course the access to information law as you said is new mm-hmm. and always when something is new um there are issues of course of uh compliance um if you know very well giving information is a culture mm-hmm. and culture is something that is built over time mm-hmm. Uh, we are coming from uh, a background where people have not been giving information but now we, the law opens up and say hey guys 
You have to. You have to. You must. Not actually. You you have yes, to. You, you must. must. Yes, yeah. you must. Mm, mm, the mm. Lord said so. Mm. So um, definitely, we have uh, a good response. Uh, what we see on ground, uh, many people have come up. The uh, reason I'm saying this uh, is that uh, as Rwanda Governance Board, uh, together with other institutions mm -hmm. uh, in media, uh, Media High Council, RMC, we have made a, a country tour. Uh, we have gone to all the five provinces of the country, uh, trying to emphasize the importance of the access to information law. And uh, the response has been very high. Uh, we have uh, met all the local leaders mm -hmm. uh, from governors, uh, mayors, executive secretaries, including even the, 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 the um, security Details, personnel, yes. uh, police mm -hmm. and all else. They have attended uh, the, the workshops that we've organized in their provinces. And we exchanged uh, these questions as you're asking right now, mm -hmm. you know. When you deal with journalists, mm -hmm. do you give them information? If you don't, why? Mm -hmm. There is suspicion between journalists and local leaders. You know, in some places, of course, people will tell us so. Mm -hmm. Is it so in your place? Mm -hmm. And if it is, what is the reason? That I don't talk yeah. to yeah. reporters. Yeah, yeah. And then we show them, uh, of course, being, being a local leader, being a journalist, the ultimate uh, goal is to build the nation, mm -hmm. all right? is to get citizens informed. Mm. So we show them really the difference is not there, but it's something that is created um, within certain perceptions that has to be done away with. And the response was really a good, and uh, um, we, we attended one of the workshops in Eastern Province, of course, and we saw how leaders were interacting with journalists. So we happened to, to, to be at the place uh, when there was a, 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 another function that was almost concluding of forming uh, uh, members of, of a local football club. Mm -hmm. So we're impressed to see that the local leaders were comfortably voting in journalists as members of the local football team. Mm. So this showed us that there the was, trust is growing. Yeah, there was uh, a good working relationship between the two people. Then let's, let's now look at it from a bigger perspective. What if we thought of a media center? And maybe my next question comes in a form of asking you when are we going to have this a center where you know people or journalists or just members of the public can walk in decentralized they can whether they have a radio or a tv at home or not they can still be able to walk in get whatever kind of information they need mm. and maybe on a weekly basis someone either from the office of the government spokesperson mm. comes to give information yeah. on current affairs issues yeah we, so that it's it's two way it's not just a leader waiting for a reporter to come and ask a question but mm. also a leader mm. understanding that this information is important let me go out and give it out yeah. when are we going to see this yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a very good question and uh, i would say that we don't have to wait for that media center mm -hmm. we can even do it right now mm -hmm. without the media center mm -hmm. what we have uh we should be proud of we have an association of journals uh, I don't know whether you are a member. Yes. Uh, are you a member? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if we have the association, then we can, as we always make uh, workshops, we have meetings in hotels. We meet in uh, rendezvous where we have agreed to meet. Mm -hmm. Then why can't we invite those people wherever we want? Why are we not doing it? Out? Why are we not doing it then? Journalists, why is it there not is happening? an association of mm -hmm. journalists. So is the association, <laughs> the leaders, are they sleeping or? Uh, I would ask that question from you. <laughs> <laughs> be open, don't be diplomatic. But for you can us, openly for say us, that the journalists uh, are the ones who are not for exploiting For us, we this. are supportive. Mm. Uh, we are supportive of such initiatives. That's a very good uh, idea. I will tell you one thing that we have done, mm -hmm. uh, which points to that direction. Mm -hmm. We have already provided... Um, we have seen that there are some journalists, of course, who do not have offices. Yeah. Um, some journalists who struggle to get internet connection. Indeed. And uh, so we said, then what can we do? So we, um, from the funds that are for supporting the media uh, development, mm -hmm. we bought uh, computers, mm -hmm. uh, quite a number of them, and they got installed in uh, one lab, 
uh, just at the uh, where IRI has an office. Mm. I think IRI mm. has an office mm. with uh, the self regulatory body. Mm. So as we speak of now, I think we have more than 20 computers fully installed. Accessible. To accessible any to journalist any journalist accredited at in what Rwanda. time accredited in Rwanda. They can go there and yeah. do their reports, exactly. research. Even a non-journalist, if you say I want to do some research, and well, I don't think they stop anybody. All right. So that lab is now fully functional. Okay. Okay. So uh, we are on the right track. I think uh, that is uh, one step we've done. Mm -hmm. That one of having uh, um, discussions, of, uh, that is something that is very crucial. That is something that is very important. And even inviting uh, journalists from, from outside. Mm -hmm. Why not? From the region. We learn from them. This is something that uh, can be supported and that can be done. Okay. So I think uh, I'm expecting maybe uh, to get much of those questions from you guys. The Journalists Association, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What have you done to promote yourself? Mm -hmm. We are giving you support, mm -hmm. you know? We're trying ourselves to give you support. But these programs should be developed, should In, be brought and, forward. And, 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 and built. I'm hoping that uh, this suggestion will reach uh, your seniors and, and, and others so that we see a more in emphasizing on the two-way thing so that officials don't just think that I'll wait for a reporter to call me yeah. or a public relations officer to wait. This information has to also come out fast from these people, right? Yeah. There yeah. we're in, a, in agreement mm. and it's a better way of ending the show <laughs> in that particular, <laughs> particular uh, situation yeah. because we are also out of time. But thank you so much, Mr. Gerald yeah. Band. We go. definitely will be anticipating for more debates and discussions like All this right. one yeah. uh, uh, to, to, to develop uh, this sector and the country uh, as a whole. All right, there you have it. One-on-one uh, -on -one comes uh, to an end at this particular moment. My guest, Gerald Banda, in charge of media at the Rwanda Governance Board. And it's a wrap. I'm Eugene Anangwe. Goodbye.